G'day guys and welcome to part 6 of Project DH on Paul's Garage. Uh, today we're going to tackle the front suspension, replace the front springs and shock absorbers and uh, we're going to also um, get stuck into the uh, uh, brakes and wheel bearings. Um, one thing I did notice when I was having a look at this car, uh, it doesn't have kingpins on the front, it has ball joints and drum brakes. Uh, I First of all I thought why would somebody put an HR front end on it with ball joints and utilize drum brakes instead of disc. Um, then I thought well maybe it's from an HD with the drum brakes and, uh, and ball joints. Uh, and I was talking to somebody in regards to this and they said that the very late model EHs had a ball joint front end. I don't know how, how correct that is, maybe somebody can, uh, can leave me a message and, and tell me if that's correct or not because I'm just, I'm just not sure, I can't find anything about it. Um, so anyway, um, the ball joints, um, top and bottom ball joints and all the, the tie rod ends and all that stuff will be, be replaced as well because they're a little bit, um, a little bit dodgy looking. Uh, so anyway, we'll get uh, we'll get stuck into uh, into the uh, front suspension. Now so we'll just get started on the on the driver side here. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is um, is just pull everything apart that needs to be pulled apart, um, and um, as far as uh, tie rods. Uh, bolts for the shock absorber, front stabiliser bar, um, get all those bits and pieces off, and then uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll pull the pull the shock absorber out, lower the car down, remove the spring, replace the spring, uh, and then I'll do the do the wheel bearing last. Now what, I, <clears throat> what I've noticed about these, um, these shock absorbers is obviously aftermarket and they're a little bit um, bigger in diameter, uh, they don't want to come out. So what I, uh, what I did with the other one is actually, when I, after I got it out, I got the Dremel and made the, the hole inside the, um, where it bolts up here in the lower wishbone, I just made that a little bit bigger. shock. All right, so I just uh, just off camera managed to get the um, uh, that uh, top ball joint free, so I'll just drop the car down and um, 
um, release that spring and and replace it with the new one. There is something interesting uh, to have a look at the springs. They're one inch lower, but when you compare them with the uh, spring that's coming out, uh, there's quite a bit of difference. So we'll just uh, we'll lower the car down now onto the jack and and uh, release it. I'll just take off the, off the castle nut here, the top ball joint. If I lower that jack, well, oh. oh, hang on. <clears throat> One thing we forgot. What did we forget? Brake line. Let's disconnect her. There's the brake line out, so we're right to go now. So somebody's put a new metal brake line here. But I'm a little bit perplexed as to why they wouldn't replace the, um, the rubber lines at the same time. So there's the two springs, original spring and one inch lowered spring. Now that actually measures 72 millimeters from there. So I know if you've got standard springs and you want to cut them one inch shorter, you cut them, you, you measure around till you get to half an inch and you cut that half an inch out and that will lower a standard spring by, uh, by one inch according to Mr. YouTube. Um, so these ones are a heavy duty spring. They are uh, a, um, a thicker in diameter. So the compression rate that the springs move at, this will compress a lot more than what this will. Hopefully the ride won't be, um, won't be compromised, but, uh, but that, is, that is the difference. So obviously the, um, the flattened part of the spring goes up and uh, this part here just sits above that hole there. 
So it's fairly easy to get it done. In situ. Being such a shorter, much shorter spring, it's a lot easier to bring up. Load up the sway bar link. And we're in. So now the coil springs in and it uh, sitting in the correct spot. I just need to put the, uh, the shock absorber up. Uh, now off camera I did actually um, round out some of this square hole with the Dremel so that shock absorber will now fit straight up there. Um, I'm going to replace the wheel bearings. I've got to put a new cotter spring in here, uh, uh, cotter pin rather, uh, in through there, pull the wheel bearings Pull that uh, hub off, and uh, also I'll be replacing this um, this rubber brake line there. I've got a new one, same as I did on the other side. So I'll just uh, go to and put it all back together. So now that, <clears throat> now that all the suspension's in on this side, uh, new springs, shock absorber. I've got to replace these brake lines, and I've got to replace this. Um, uh, wheel cylinder. I'm just, um, I've never done this before on a disc on a drum brake, so the best thing for me to do is to pull the whole job log apart. Um, I pull the stub axle off. Like I said, I haven't done this before on. On one of these, I, I will regrease it and everything. That's very breezy in there, very much so. That um, the grease that's in there is just running out like treacle. I don't normally wear gloves, um, however, today I wish I had. I think that um, that might have a little bit of. Um, brake fluid or something in it as well to make it that bloody that gooey anyway that's all destined for the parts washer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this whole thing off because to get this brake line out, you've got to bring it away. So there's two bolts there. So I'm thinking... I don't know whether that bolt goes right through into the stub axle as well. But I figured if I take the whole thing off, then I can put it on the bench and I can work on it. Uh, 
Yeah. All very greasy in there. That may be all, all destined. <laughs> All destined for the parts washer, I think. And of course, being <clears throat> being a metric guy, um, I'm not really all that good with this imperial stuff. And anyway. What, as they say, what could possibly go wrong? Now we're going to undo this one as well. Have a look. I've already loosened that. So, it's when I was trying to get this brake line out. Bang, that fell off. <laughs> so, I got all that off now, so that makes it easy for me to get this brake line out now. So I can go down and get a couple of them ordered. And I can change that, um, that master cylinder around, the wheel cylinder rather. And I can put this on the bench and just do it from there, so that will work out well for me. All right, well, I'm over in the other shed at the moment. I'm just going to um, replace the um, that wheel cylinder on there. Um, I've never actually pulled front drum brakes apart before, so that'll be interesting. Um, I'll take some photographs and make sure that I uh, I get it right. The um, the grease that was in the wheel bearing was like. Was like more like oil than grease um, so went down and bought new wheel bearings um, for either side so I'll do both sets won't leave anything to chance and I got um, I got new brake lines just made up from uh, my local brake pro um, so I'm not leaving anything to chance chance there this is the old one um, you won't be able to I doubt if you'd be able to to see it but it's um it's all it's all cracked and perished and most likely probably still the original one from was it 55 years ago 57 years ago whenever they were made and of course being a metric guy um, I, my none of my flared um, spanners will fit so I had to buy a set of spare of of um, flared nut spanners in Imperial because it's uh, the brake lines on this is a, are a three eight. I only wanted the three eight, but I had to buy the whole set. But it was only 20, 22 bucks or something like that. So I guess it's not too bad. I got more tools than what you can shake a stick at. It's uh, it, it's unbelievable the amount of tools that I've got. I basically got two sets, one up there. One, one down here. All right, so I'll crack on. I'll uh, I'll start pulling these um, brakes apart, and I've got the uh, new uh, new wheel cylinder to go in. So um, without any further ado, we'll get into it and we'll get that done. Unfortunately, the um, the camera battery went dead. You guys didn't get to to see me pull these apart. I'll. Uh, I'll make sure the camera's working all right when I put them back together. Um, this is the old wheel cylinder um, that I've taken out. It was uh, it was full of disgusting brown, rusty brake fluid inside. Um, so, oh well, there you go. 
you, can you can you see what's inside there? Yeah. Um, so obviously, uh, not too uh, not too good, and um, and leaking very very badly. So I'll uh, I will clean that out and and put it aside. But there's not much. Not much we can do to save, save her. I'm afraid. It's, um, yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll pull it apart and I'll clean it and put it back together again. But it, it um, needs a full rebuild. If 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 that's at all possible these days to rebuild these things. But um, anyway. I'll clean it all out and then put it away, put it in some oil and put it away just in case it can be at some stage when these become unobtainable. Um, unobtainable um, it might possibly be able to be rebuilt. Well, I went and got a little little pair of vice grips. Managed to grab hold of that spring, as you can see. Claret, claret coming out. Uh, I didn't swear much, just a little bit. Good bit of skin come off there, though. So I'm hoping now that it looks the same. Uh, Spring on the left, spring on the right, big hooky thing coming down to there, that comes through there, spring from there to there, spring from there to there, little spring on there, that spring comes down to there, that's on there, that spring's on there, there on there, so that's, oh lots of claret. And got clarity in the brakes. They'll always know who's done it. <laughs> and that's got an even gap all the way around. That looks like it's central. So that looks looks correct to me. I'm going to get these canes out. I notice uh, in these kits that we get now. Everything's made by the Mongrel Packaging Company. Yeah. Always difficult to get out. Oh, and those bits of plastic are sharp on your hands. You end up with more claret in a bit.
And we'll grease up all the all the bearings. I like to use um, on wheel bearings. I use like to use this Valvoline Valplex. Uh, it's a blue grease. I don't know why. I've just always used it. You need to push this stuff right into the right into the bearings. No doubt you guys have all done bearings before, but for those of you that haven't, you really need to make sure that the bearing's got plenty of plenty of grease in it. I don't know if I said anything yesterday, but um, the grease that came out of here was like oil. So I don't know what sort of grease was used, but something tells me it wasn't a very good one. <laughs> I have to reuse these dust seals. It seems to be pretty good. It's in good nick. The ones that come with the kit are too small. for a trailer really so that's got the the dust seal in there and Probably not so much necessary, but I might have to put grease inside the hub as well. Let's clean the grease off the gloves <clears throat> because I will reuse these gloves in a minute when I do the, do the next side. We'll take that up to the car and uh, we'll bang it on.
There we go. The old uh, XJ Jaguar hubs. And then your rag. <laughs> You know, the XJ Jaguar hubs have got a grease nipple on here. Now you can actually, um, once you put it all together, you can, you can put some extra grease in there. Now put your washer on. Castle nut for those you don't know a castle nut is shaped like that simply because of the um, oh, looks like the top of a castle. We'll bung him on. What size is that? Sneak over and get my least favourite spanner in the world. A good old shifter. I'm not a big fan of shifters. And that's it, that's all you need to do, it's just a little nip up. Well, I'd like a cotter pin. There we have it, that's uh, all back together. Alright guys, that's it for this episode. I um, hope you in enjoyed watching me uh, struggle a little bit there with those, those uh, drum brakes. Uh, not something I want to <laughs> really want to tackle again, but no doubt at some stage I'll have to. Um, so in the next episode uh, I'll be removing all the carpets, um, seats, all that sort of stuff, rust treating the floor, um, sound deadening, uh, and then getting all the interior back together. So until then, uh, do what you need to do, uh, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in episode 7. Thanks for watching.